How you doing guys? Soul Refuge, WF White here once again. And today uh, I'll be continuing the theme on uh, this thing that's going on in Mexico. Uh, you know, back in the past, there were five Mexican pastors who were upset with Billy Graham because uh, what happened, Mr. Graham had a crusade and uh, they were very upset because at, at the crusade, the people were sent back to their own churches. And so in other words, if you are Roman Catholic, uh, when they went forward at the crusade, they were sent back to their own church. Let me quote to you from uh, a book, uh, Smokescreens here. It says, a few years ago, five pastors from Mexico came to see me asking for help. They told me I must talk to Billy Graham. I told them that was impossible. I was just a little track publisher. Then they told me Billy Graham had destroyed their churches. They said he held a crusade and told all those who had received Christ to go back to their original churches and win those people to Christ. The pastors told me their people followed Billy's instruction and all went back to the Roman Catholic system. Twelve years of work destroyed in one night. That's from a book called Smoke Screens by Chick Publications, 1983. So, so here's a, a group of faithful men of God, and um, there was this crusade. And obviously, you know, when, when people get the gospel preached to them, you know, I came out of the Roman Catholic system. I heard the gospel in a natural progression is when the truth sets you free. You're born again of the Spirit. You leave. And, and folks, uh, that's what I did. I saw, uh, you know, I saw what the scriptures declared, and then I compared it to the uh, teachings of the Roman Catholic uh, Church and their man-made pr traditions regarding the uh, sacrifice of the Mass, purgatory, uh, Mary worship, Mary as a mediator, statues, my, oh, my, I could go on and on. <laughs> and, and I obviously, I came out for my life's sake, for my soul's sake, I, I left that system. So uh, these five pastors from Mexico had every right to be upset and um Think about this. This was written back in 1983, folks. So we're talking like a good 30 uh, some odd years. This is uh, still going on today. And the unity, my oh my, is much, much more intense than it was back then. So the call of the modern day church, folks, uh, especially this system of Rome, it's to unify. Now, the Church of Rome, folks, don't forget this, they declare themselves to be the only true church. Incredible. And, uh, you know, they look at churches like the evangelical churches as Protestant sects, S-E-C-T-S. And um, that's what I've been telling people this, folks, since I got saved. I saw the handwriting on a wall, uh, spoke to, I still speak to as many people as I can if you meet them on the... Um, street or in a supermarket, which happened yesterday. Uh, we're, a we're able to uh, share the gospel truth with a man. And, and folks, uh, it's incredible that there's silence within the pulpits in this modern day. And uh, it it's getting kind of scary. This is apostasy, folks. This is what the Lord spoke about, a great uh, apostasy. There, there'll be a falling away, folks. Uh, you're getting very scary out there. So uh, I'm warning you here, folks, that you must be born again. You must become a new creation in Jesus Christ. The Roman Catholic system teaches that you're born again when you're baptized as a little infant. Uh, when, it, when a priest would sprinkle uh, what they call holy water on your head, I had that done to me. I didn't know Jesus Christ, folks, hear me, until many, many years when I was born again of the Spirit. So... Uh, keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. When, let me quote you, John 16, verses 13 and 14. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Folks, one thing you need to know is that the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not a force. Look at those two verses uh, and how many times you, you, you hear the word he, okay? Think about that. He, look, look, he shall not speak of himself. This isn't a force we're dealing with. It's The Holy Spirit will always testify of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will not point you to Mary. 
The Holy Spirit will not point you to a Roman Catholic saint. The Holy Spirit will not point you to the Pope. The Holy Spirit will point you to Jesus Christ. And that's, that's what happened with me, folks. That, that's what happens when anybody's truly saved. You realize that, that, that Jesus Christ, he's the, he's the Son of God. He's deity. You don't need anybody else. I didn't need Mary. All that stuff went out the window, folks, when I got saved. So, so here you have this, this counterfeit unity with a church that declares itself to be the only true church. This is the church that tortured and murdered people during the Middle Ages, ladies and gentlemen. Go online and look at, at some of the devices that they used when they tortured people, when they burnt them at the stake. All because people refused to become a Roman Catholic or agree with what they taught. If you spoke out against them, they considered you to be a heretic, and they still believe that today. Oh, yes, they do. And that's why you have a 100 curses uh, from the Council of Trent. They're still upheld today. By Vatican II, uh, this is you know people think that Vatican II Council changed every. Oh no, it did not. They were some surface changes. Their doctrines remain the same. Those curses from Trent are still on the books today. They are still in effect today. So so I'm shouting a warning here once again. You yeah, there, there were people um, from the past that they saw right through this system. Uh, one of them was Charles Spurgeon. Now. He's known as the Prince of Preachers. Now, I'm not a Calvinist, but uh, I'm only quoting this man because of his acute discernment regarding this counterfeit church of Rome. Listen to what uh, Mr. Spurgeon said. He said, our ancient enemies have small belief in our common sense if they imagine that we shall ever be able to trust them after having so often beheld the depths of the Jesuitical cunning and duplicity. The sooner we let certain archbishops and cardinals know that we are aware of their designs and will in nothing cooperate with them, the better for us and our country. Of course, we shall be howled at as bigots, but we can afford to smile at that cry when it comes from the church which invented the Inquisition. No peace with Rome is the motto of reason as well as of religion. That's by Charles Haddon Spurgeon. From Geese in Their Hoods, Selected Writings on Roman Catholicism, Publisher Unknown, 1873. Now, there, there's some words, folks. You, you will hear nothing that even resembles that from the modern-day pulpit. You have all of this talk about revival, all of this talk about the anointing. And here... The system of Rome is rising up like never before, folks. They're walking into the church, making a mockery out of the truth of the gospel, and very little is being said. Here's a quote from a man by the name of Samuel Morse. Who is he? He's the one who invented the Morse code. And you, you know this is a smart man. The Morse code. And this is what Mr. Samuel Morse said regarding... The Jesuits, keep in mind we have a pope, a Jesuit pope, the first Jesuit pope, Jorge Bogoglio, or Bogoglio, Bogoglio, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but this man, now known as Pope Francis, this is what Samuel Morse had to say about the Jesuits, quote, they are Jesuits, the society of men, after exerting their tyranny for upwards of 200 years at length, became so formidable to the world, threatening the entire subversion of all social order that even the Pope, whose devoted subjects they are and must be by the vow of their society, was compelled to dissolve them. They had not been suppressed, however, for 50 years before the waning influence of popery and despotism required their useful labors to resist the light of democratic liberty and the Pope Pius VII, simultaneously with the formation of the Holy Alliance, revived the order of the Jesuits in all their power from their vow of unqualified submission to the sovereign pontiff. They have been appropriately called the Pope's bodyguard. And do Americans need to be told what Jesuits are? They are a secret society, a sort of Masonic order, with super-added features of revolting odiousness and a thousand times more dangerous. They're not merely priests 
or of one religious creed. They are merchants and lawyers and editors, and men of any profession having no outward badge in this country by which to be recognized they are about in all your society. They can assume any character that of angels of light or ministers of darkness to accomplish their one great end, the service upon which they are sent, whatever that service may be. They are all educated men, prepared and sworn to start at any moment and in any direction and for any service, commanded by the general of their order, bound to no family, community, or country, by the ordinary ties which bind men, and sold for life to the cause of the Roman pontiff. And who are these agents? They are, for the most part, Jesuits, an ecclesiastical order, proverbial through the world for cunning, duplicity, and total want of moral principle, an order so skilled in all the arts of deception that even in Catholic countries, in Italy itself, it became intolerable and the people required its suppression. And that's from Samuel Morse, Foreign Conspiracy Against the Liberties of the United States, Boston, Massachusetts, Crocker and Brewster, 1835, Volume 1, page 55. Folks, think about that. All those years ago, it's almost 200 years ago, that this man, Samuel Morse, shouted out a warning. And folks, we're living in a day when you're going to see incredible things take place. That Once again, I'm going to leave it right there. The warning is going forth. It's up to you. You're sitting in a church, and your pastor, you find them dancing with Rome. My word uh, to you today, folks, get out as quick as you can. Don't join in unity with the system of Roman Catholicism. I'll leave it right there. Once again, be blessed.